Darkest Dungeon is seen by many as a masterpiece, a truly incredible game, and I 100% agree. This puts Darkest Dungeon 2 in a really tough position though, because it's basically impossible to create a sequel that doesn't disappoint. Now they could have just created some new areas, new classes, given the ability some tweaks and upgraded the graphics, then called it a sequel and this would have been fine, if not a little underwhelming. But they didn't do that. The creators did something much more ambitious. They revamped the series, actively making an entirely new experience, which still taps into the core of what makes Darkest Dungeon amazing. A feat which is incredible. This means that it's hard to outwardly say if the sequel is better or not, because that decision is largely preference based. Which game you like better will be decided by what you are looking for in a Darkest Dungeon game. Darkest Dungeon 2 is just a different game, and interestingly this new style means that the original isn't obsolete. If I want to play the Darkest Dungeon series, I might play the original, or I might play the sequel depending on my mood. So I'm going to go over what Darkest Dungeon 2 has introduced, noting the differences between the two games, detailing how this affects the gameplay, and how the experience is changed overall. And I'll talk about what I think works and doesn't work, but ultimately it's up for you to decide whether you prefer the gameplay choices and mechanics of the original or the sequel. Right off the bat, I'll also say that I think the sequel is incredible. I don't know if I like it better, but I'm really glad that they decided to make it what it is. The biggest and most significant change is to the progression system. No longer is there the hamlet, the hub area that you upgrade over time. The original had a pretty classic 1.0 Dungeons and Dragons approach approach, where much of the game was about going into various dungeons, extracting loot, acquiring tokens to upgrade your town, and giving your heroes experience so they could level up and become stronger. All of this is completely gone. Now the entire game is set on a stagecoach, and your band of heroes are driving the carriage towards a mountain, and your end goal is to defeat a big boss at the end of the mountain. After succeeding or failing each run, you get a bunch of points, which upgrades your profile level. As your profile level increases, you get access to new heroes and new items. And access to new and stronger items is what makes you better equipped for each run, because your characters are always the same strength at the start of each run, and you never get to start runs with extra bonuses. You're only more likely to get stronger items from the random starting loot and throughout the course of the run. So I think this is a good change, but there's a couple reasons you might not like it. Majoritively, because the sense of progression ingrained in the original can be incredibly satisfying. Upgrading your town making super soldiers, getting new abilities and access to new areas or items can ultimately be where some people derive their enjoyment, and these elements have largely been revoked. On top of this, some of the upgrades allowed for greater optionality and autonomy over choices, both of which have been stripped away. However, the game in general has stripped back quite a lot in an attempt to streamline the game, to focus on the actual runs and core gameplay. One of the biggest detractors I felt of the original is that every run was waylaid by 5-10 minutes of random admin you sort of needed to do in town. Checking the stagecoach for any new possible heroes to recruit, making sure you were putting your stressed heroes in the tavern and church, upgrading the new unlocked abilities, etc. And often I just want to do the runs, and I wouldn't want to spend my time doing this shit. So if you were only tangentially interested in the town upgrading and roster management elements and just wanted to do fun dungeon crawls, then you were putting yourself at a disadvantage. But on the other hand, investing time into that and taking the effort to be really good at it would be advantageous. So if you didn't care for that stuff, then it's really good that it's gone. But if you care about that stuff a lot, then you're probably gonna find this game a little empty. This new progression has also switched the ultimate goals of runs, where before so much of the focus was about getting money, badges, tokens, or whatever, things that can help you upgrade your town. Instead of focusing on each run individually and trying to succeed as best as possible, it was about grabbing as many resources for the bigger picture. This could mean you were hemorrhaging and putting aside your immediate enjoyment or maximal possible enjoyment for each run in the name of constantly giving to the greater cause. For some, this balancing act and decision making is the point of the game and what is fun about it, and I agree to a degree. Like, do you choose to go risky and dump torches in exchange for more tokens, gambling that you'll be able to deal with the harder battles going forward, or do you play it safe? And dealing with the consequences, whether positive or negative, can be thrilling. 
Meanwhile, Darkest Dungeon 2 massively front ends runs and the gameplay. Every run is just about completing it, and there's not really a larger framework you're working towards or improving. Not only is there not the town admin you need to do, you also don't have to pick the items you need for each run like the original. It just throws you into it. The item buying for many people is confusing at first and a massive hurdle to get into the original game. Needing to know what you need makes the game overwhelming and I honestly still use Dark as companion to tell me what I should bring. So I like the fact that getting into runs is more fluid and overall easier but I can see how for some people this might remove an element of the game that they really like. So let's talk about what the runs actually look like as it's quite different. The days of going to the menu and choosing between ruins or warrens, a medium dungeon or a long dungeon, all of that stuff is gone. Each run is you on your stagecoach, trying to make it to a mountain and kill a boss. During the course of which you'll go through roughly four dungeon-esque things, stopping at inns along the way to replenish health, reduce stress, and acquire more resources. Each one of these de facto dungeons takes 45 minutes to over an hour, meaning a successful run is around three to five hours, which is obviously much longer than the original by a lot, a choice which is a necessity with the game's new mechanics. It wouldn't make sense to have the old short, medium and long dungeon system, however, whether you like it more or less is certainly a personal decision. The main thing to note here is that they are really trying to make the gameplay more prominent, because even though it's four to five times longer to do a single run, you probably only do around 10 minutes of administration during all of that. The admin you do is at these checkpoints called inns, where you buy new items, improve hero skills, restore health, and relieve stress. All of which is pretty quick, intuitive, and is basically a much more fleshed out version of the original game's camping system. Also, the hero's rest abilities are removed from the game and replaced by items, which I personally prefer. The paths in the dungeon are also quite different in that they are all linear, which leads to less backtracking and a greater sense of forward propulsion. These paths do have different choices you can take while traveling along them, it's not just one single line. The map is also usually much more filled out, meaning that you have a much better understanding of the options of available to you when making your way through a dungeon. If you like agency and choice, you'll like the sequel better, and if you like brutal randomness, then you'll prefer the original, and that's basically a true statement for the games as a whole. This choice is also apparent when going to a location, because different characters will offer their opinion on what should be done, and you can choose. Like you can choose to fight some enemies or run away. This also applies when picking paths. The characters will say their preference, and picking their preference can relieve stress, while picking another option can add stress. You also control the carriage, which is pretty janky and unfluid, but feels darkest dungeony. And there's a mini game within this movement to hit piles of stuff and you will sometimes get items. This is definitely more engaging than the walking through dungeons of the original, but it's not crazy fun or anything. Lastly, the different locations are a little limited and the areas are pretty samey. Overall, there's less stylistic diversity than the original, however, I think this may be due to the game being in early access, so I don't want to be too disparaging about this. All in all, I'd say I like the new system more, because it feels like you have more control, the choices you make have more impact, and in general, you are doing more things more often, which I like. Let's move on to the characters as they've been revamped. No longer are you recruiting individual people People who will be a certain class with a collection of traits that you build up over time. No, rather each class exists and every run you are given access to a new, fresh, and random version of that class. Like, you can't have multiple man-at-arms on your roster, they'll just be man-at-arms in general. At the beginning of the run, you'll pick the four heroes you want to start the run with, and then they'll be given some traits and you'll be off. And I say start because no longer are you trying to complete the dungeon with your four heroes. Rather, when your characters die, they'll be replaced by new characters from the classes you have remaining when you get to the next in. For example, my jester died, so when I got to the new inn, the game gave me a grave robber. This is a double-edged sword, because I no longer have favorite characters or particular heroes I love using, have invested a lot of time and resources into, and want to survive. I mean, this exists a little because I prefer using some classes more than others, but in general I have less connection to the people I'm using. On the other hand, losing a hero isn't as brutally painful, and accepting death and dealing with failure is A, much easier to do, and B, much more common, 
which I think better encapsulates the spirit of the game. I would say I miss the old system, but I think there's merit to the new one and I don't mind it. The characters have also gotten some fun new upgrades as each character now has 10 abilities rather than just six. This expansion of their possible arsenal is nice and gives more optionality for what synergies you can have and what's possible to do during combat, a great inclusion. There is also a change to the way heroes get and upgrade new powers. As the guild and blacksmith are no longer a thing, the old ways of improving characters are gone. Instead, you unlock new abilities by going to these hero shrines that are littered along the dungeon's paths. I thought these were really well written and made me so much more invested in the class than I have ever been previously. There'll also sometimes be unique combat encounter things which you need to win in order to get new skills, which are pretty fun and can actually be tricky if you're not sure how to get through them. Overall, I think this is excellently done. Once you do unlock the new skills once though, you permanently have the skill in that class. This does mean that you are drip fed skills much, much slower, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Upgrading heroes has also been massively simplified and minimized. There's no multiple upgrades to skills or upgrades to heroes' weapons and armor, it's gone. It's only one simple upgrade you can do to each skill. Over the course of your run, you'll receive mastery points for your team, and you can spend these on any of your character's skills and they will stay upgraded for the remainder of the run. This obviously means that demigod characters who can carry teams are no longer a thing. Although I think the additional bonuses, especially providing extra status conditions that these skills get when upgraded, adds a great dynamic to combat. I really like the changes that they've made to classes and characters. Do I like it better though? Uh, not especially, but I think this system fits Darkest Dungeon 2 really nicely, and the old system simply wouldn't work as well in this game. On to the combat, which has gone through a ton of small changes, and overall, I'd say these changes are great. Despite being small individually, they have a pretty big impact on the combat, and since this is the central aspect of the game, I'm happy to say that I do enjoy combat more in Darkest Dungeon 2. Right off the rip, there's a fundamental change to the combat's core functionality, one that orients itself around buffs and debuffs. These have always been in the game, but now they are the bread and butter of combat. In the original, many abilities were just damaging, with varying percentages to hit, and much of the gambit was about whether you wanted to do a high damaging low hit chance move, or whether you wanted to go for a safer option. That's not the case anymore. Every move has 100% accuracy. No longer is hit chance an issue, miss percentage, or any of this. Everything is much more predictable. What there is a huge increase of is dodge chance, ability to reduce the damage of a shot by 50 or 75%, causing a 50% chance to miss, 50% extra damage, 50% less damage, and so on. Working around these conditions, both offensively and defensively, is the key to success. Something you'll be looking to do, especially as many characters' moves provide these conditions. Let's look at the Jester, who starts with three offensive move. Slice off, which does damage and causes bleeding, and I should quickly say bleeding, blight, burns, all that stuff is basically the same. So you could do straight damage, or you could use back off, which does damage but gives the person it hits a condition which gives them a 50% chance to miss. While the other move gives Jester a 50% dodge chance. These also move you back and forth in the position order, but let's ignore this. Situationally, you can decide to give a chance for a particularly strong enemy to miss a shot, or if you have low health, maybe you want to increase your dodge chance or whatever. And I'll say this change I think is excellent because it means luck isn't really as much of a factor. Enemies still have resistances, so these debuffs may not apply and all moves have damage windows which vary the damage of each hit. So luck isn't totally bereft. Overall though, it's more predictable. You can plan around applying and inflicting buffs and debuffs. It feels like you have much greater control in whether you succeed or fail. Ultimately, much less often do I feel like a death or a failure was because of some random bullshit, and it feels more like it's my fault, it's bad planning or poor move prioritization. Which I think is great, because I much prefer when your success is dictated by you and not RNG. Some other notable changes to the combat is the increase in moves you can have to 5 instead of 4, and the addition of 
combat items. Each character can be equipped with one item stack and they can choose to use it before their turn in addition to their move. These items are things like healing items, either straight heals or burn healing, bleed healing, etc. Similarly, there's items that get rid of debuffs. There's offensive items which can do damage or inflict conditions. It's a good mix of things. And just like the move to center buffs and debuffs, these items work to bring more dynamism to combat but dynamics the player can control, and this change is a thumbs up from me. The last major combat-esque change that exists is to stress. Instead of a convoluted and abstractly large 200 stress bar system with random and varying stress values being applied, stress now works on a much easier and simpler 10 point system. Stress is gained from enemy moves, but also decisions you make while progressing forward, and the best way to decrease it is at the in or with items. And moves that decrease stress will only do so if the stress level is equal to five or more, making stress easier to manage because the system is more stable and easier to understand and work around. Stress also massively affects and is affected by relationships. This is an altogether new mechanic where your heroes will gain or lose affinity for each other through a bunch of different actions. These can be through the course of battle, at an inn by using certain items, or defined when you make choices on the road. Like if two heroes want the same choice and you pick it, this will increase their affinity, while a hero that wants something else will get decreased affinity. When affinity improves or decreases enough, two characters will gain a relationship status. If it's positive, then they can give each other random bonuses during fights. These can be providing buffs, giving characters health, reducing stress, or even also attacking on their partner's turn, while bad relationships will give negative buffs and increase stress. This system is really solid, but it leads to scenarios where when things are good, they're great. You're winning battles and getting a bunch of extra buffs to make it even easier work, while when shit is bad, it's really bad, and the sense of impending doom seeps in. This is in large part because if your stress level reaches 10, then your character has a breakdown. This will drop their health really low, but most annoyingly, it destroys their relationships. This can lead to them gaining a bad relationship, giving other negative modifiers, and things can turn quickly from there. Because if you have even one or two breaks, then the whole team works together just to shit on each other and fuck up the day. When it's bad, you feel fucked. There'll be constant pop-ups of debuffs, and I mean constant, like one or two for each character's turns. It's brutal. This is bad because that feeling sucks, but it's also excellent because this does the best job of making you feel the pain of a run falling apart and you really empathize with the hero's desperate and insane plights. Overall, I'd say this stress system along with the combat as a whole is a lot better. I always felt like the old system was a bit randomly punitive and bad luck would be a bigger decider in your demise than I wanted. While now it feels like skill and knowledge are much more influential with luck being a tertiary factor. So those are the main changes and differences between the original and the sequel. There are a ton of small things that I haven't mentioned such as the difference in items and the specific changes to characters abilities but I'm not sure how much these will affect someone's interest in the game and I wanted to focus on the big picture stuff. For me, I think the sequel is amazing. I don't necessarily like it better than the original, but I'm glad it is what it is. Now there's two excellent and distinctively different games which I can play. If I want that build up a town in specific characters sort of gameplay, then I'll play the original. And if I just want to challenge myself and do some fun runs, then I'll play the sequel. That's also the video. I'm keen to hear which changes you like or dislike which game you prefer overall, so put those in the comments below. Also, like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth game analysis. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.